So I'm so excited for the future of Ethereum because ETH 2.0 is just around the corner. All right, I just came across this quote from Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum, that says, ETH 2.0 is finalized except for security audits. All right, so that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about in this video, the coming of ETH 2.0 and what a huge deal that is for blockchain technology. So I'm gonna talk about what Ethereum 2.0 is in general, when it's gonna release, and what's gonna happen after we get ETH 2.0. So really quickly, if you're joining me for the first time, I'm Gregory from Dapp University. Click the like button down below, click subscribe, Subscribe. And if you want to learn to become a blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So what is Ethereum 2.0? Well, it's a new and improved version of Ethereum that's gonna be a public blockchain that's designed to bring in mass adoption, right? It's gonna help us do things like process more transactions per second on the Ethereum network and also reduce the amount of time it takes for each transaction to take place, right? One of Ethereum's big criticisms right now is that it's not quote unquote scalable, right? And we'll talk a little bit about that, about Ethereum 1.0 and the transition into Ethereum 2.0 and what a big deal this is. So if you're a user of Ethereum right now, you're a user of Ethereum 1.0, at least at the time of recording this video. and you could think of Ethereum 1.0 kind of like a prototype. And that's just not my opinion. That also is the opinion of Joseph Lubin, uh, the co-founder of Ethereum and the CEO of Consensus. And this is a quote from him at the Ethereal uh, Summit in Tel Aviv, where uh, Vitalik also said that ETH 2.0 is finalized. Here's a quote from Joseph Lubin. You could think of Ethereum 1.0 as a prototype. He says, we needed to put out something we knew wouldn't be scalable. We needed to do that to figure out how to build decentralized applications, figure out the developing tooling and the infrastructure that we need to build and deploy them. So they were trying to answer questions with Ethereum 1.0, like can you build a smart contract platform, a public blockchain that people will actually use and is going to be secure, right? Is it gonna thrive and prosper and is it gonna grow? And I think they've answered those questions and that's validated the need for uh, ETH 2.0 and has helped really you know, drive this process forward. All right, so when's it gonna happen? Like when's Ethereum 2.0 actually gonna release? So if you're like me, you've been watching Ethereum for a very long time and anytime you ask someone like, when is Ethereum 2.0 gonna get here? The answer is always, soon. <laughs> that's become a, uh, an inside joke that that's a trademarked answer. And look, I've been developing software for a really long time, so I understand how hard it is to estimate the completion date of a very complex process, like a complex piece of software. I can imagine uh, trying to estimate the deadline and the ship date for something as complex as Ethereum 2.0. So I got to give these guys a lot of slack. But at the same time, you know, I'm impatiently awaiting the arrival of Ethereum 2.0. But we got some good news. So like I said at the beginning of the video, Vitalik basically said that Ethereum 2.0 is finalized except for security audits. And the good news is we have some uh, rough timelines and schedule from Joseph Lubin, who said this at the Tel Aviv uh, Ethereal Summit. So he said that Ethereum 2.0 is going to roll out in three phases, all right? So phase one, or really phase zero, is a beacon chain phase, all right? So phase one is going to uh, roll out the sharded chains, and phase two is going to be the execution layer, all right? And he estimated the timeline for launch of the first phase was only Q1 of 2020, all right? So that's coming up really soon. That's less than three months away. So as early as the beginning of next year, we can start to see Ethereum really turn into something much more powerful, a real powerhouse of blockchain technology that could be a tipping point uh, for blockchain adoption to basically enable some the kinds of applications uh, to be built on top of that we've wanted for a really long time, right? So this is very exciting. It could be very soon. So what does this mean for Ethereum and blockchain technology in general? Could ETH 2.0 be the killer app that secures Ethereum's position as the lead in public blockchain technology? Well, it very well could, and let me explain why. So it's gonna be really hard for anyone to pass the amount of progress that Ethereum has made as a layer one blockchain protocol and smart contract platform. All right, and there's several reasons for this which we're gonna break down. So let's talk about what Ethereum is implementing in Ethereum 2.0, just some of the highlights like uh, proof of stake, um, sharding and uh, replacing the EVM with eWASM. All right, so let's talk about a couple of those things. Like proof of stake is moving uh, the consensus mechanism from a mining consensus mechanism, that's proof of work, over to proof of stake, uh, which relies on people staking their ether to become validators on the network instead of miners. So the validators are gonna replace the miners. And also sharding. So this is gonna break uh, the blockchain up into smaller blockchains that can help with the throughput of transactions on the blockchain. And also eWASM, which is going to replace the EVM uh, with a new way to run Ethereum-based clients, okay? so. 
all this stuff is going to uh, result in a huge performance boost for the layer one protocol of Ethereum. And then we're also building these other layer two, layer three solutions on top of that, which is going to give us a blockchain technology stack where you can start to have uh, you know, a blockchain app that processes a l whole lot of transactions per second. I mean, think about credit card transactions. Like when someone goes to a store, how many people across the world are all using their credit cards at the same time trying to buy things? We need blockchains that can uh, handle that kind of throughput. And that's what we're trying to achieve with something like Ethereum 2.0 and get there. And uh, this is a really exciting stepping stone in that direction. So if Ethereum gets a lot closer to solving that with ETH 2.0, it's gonna be incredibly hard for someone else to catch up with that progress, all right? Because it's really hard to achieve those kinds of results, that kind of throughput and transaction speed uh, without compromising other critical parts of blockchain like decentralization and security, right? There's sort of this battle between those two things. And if you, uh, you know, lean too far in one direction, it makes the blockchain not very desirable to use. But if Ethereum hits that sweet spot of, you know, compromising on some things, but, uh, you know, making it up for it in other areas towards a really usable and very secure blockchain, it might be the trade-off that we're looking for to push this thing forward. So here's another reason that it'd be very hard for someone to take over Ethereum at this point, especially after ETH 2.0 launches. Basically, Ethereum has the largest market share of developers building on top of their platform, all right? This indicates a few things. One, developers are actually interested in it. They see a reason to use it and to build on top of it. There's actually developer tools for them to use and build stuff. And there's a community of developers for them to, you know, rely upon. You know, almost everything that I build on this channel is based on Ethereum. And there's a reason for that. And that solely comes down to developer demand, which is a really good sign for this blockchain technology. So if someone were trying to take over Ethereum at this point, they would have to get a critical mass of developers to do it. And it's really, really hard. And it's not always a problem you could just throw money at and make it better, right? Not all crypto developers and developers in general are always just motivated by money alone. There's lots of other reasons. They want to work on things they like to work on, etc. Etc. So those are lots of reasons why Ethereum may be leading the race at this point. It, it might have a gap that's too hard for someone else to cross to be a real contender. So I'm not saying it couldn't happen, uh, but you let me know what you think down in the comments below. Has Ethereum won the race at this point? And as always, this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. So do your own research before investing in anything or making any kind of investment calls like that, right? And also there's plenty of room for other companies and chains to come in and build layer two solutions, right? That'll help Ethereum scale. And also other, uh, you know, currency chains and other blockchains that have specific use cases to interoperate with Ethereum, right? But at this point, uh, I think Ethereum is going to command a pretty impressive lead. So hope you all are excited as I am about the release of Ethereum 2.0. Hope you like this video. Uh, click the subscribe button down below. Like the video. It really helps this video get found so that more people can learn about Ethereum, learn about blockchain technology. And if you're interested in becoming a highly paid blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp.